Hi, welcome back to 10 Minute Traveller. Well, this is going to be more like 5 Minute Traveller. Um, this is a quick supplement to some of the videos that I've been doing. Um, there was a request for talking about space combat in the Traveller, uh, classic Traveller RPG. And in classic Traveller RPG, space combat is dealt with actually in two books. Uh, book 2, which is Starships, and Book 5, which is the um, High Guard book. Um, essentially, when dealing with space combat in any role-playing game, before you get into the mechanics of it, there's a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself. So, what are those questions? So the first question, and actually probably the most important question, is what exactly is the space combat going to be? We have seen in films and TV series people's impressions of what space combat is, and on the whole it looks great, but actually is it very realistic? Now, this is a game, it's not supposed to be real life, um, so who knows what space combat is like because nobody's actually done any space combat to the best of our knowledge. Is space combat something like Star Wars where you've got super fast machines uh, flying around at very close range? Actually, if you think about it, are they actually super fast? If you can see them, are they not just quite fast? Because a military jet going at Mach 3 or Mach 4 is really fast. So spacecraft, you would think, would be able to go a lot faster than that. So would you be able to see them? Or you've got the combat that you would see in something like Star Trek, where you've got these big, huge uh, ships um, that seem to be going at extremely slow speeds, maybe at some range, although uh, when you look at the special effects, they look to be within close proximity to each other, firing energy weapons and torpedoes at each other. That doesn't look very realistic as well. Then you can go to something like Battlestar Galactica, the new Battlestar Galactica, or, well, if you know what I mean, the old new Battlestar Galactica, uh, and the idea of firing large amounts of ordnance and missiles, which appeals to me more than the others. Uh, energy weapons are great, but uh, ultimately uh, missiles and ordnance seems to be something that I can get my head around when it comes to zero gravity uh, and the uh, lack of any friction against any uh, projectile being fired. That type of combat is exemplified when you look at something like the Expanse and the way that they do their combat of ships, which seems to be again done at a long range using uh, missiles, torpedoes, uh, and ordnance, guns, essentially. Knowing what type of space combat you're in is actually secondary to what I think the, is the most important question, which is why you're doing that space combat. You see, Traveller is a role-playing game, and role-playing games, by their very nature, should be groups of players coming together to play characters and have adventures and good fun and all that stuff. And that sounds great when it comes to space combat. You fly around, you fire guns, uh, torpedoes, missiles, and all that sort of great stuff. Sounds brilliant. But here's the thing. You see, a ship is a single entity, normally. So unless your players are all essentially flying one-seater fighters, they might well be, and that's possible. But unless they're all flying those one-seater fighters, they really are redundant uh, with all of the decision making, unless you've got a team of people that are constantly voting on what the next course of action is, essentially led by one or maybe two people, usually one, the captain. So the captain will make the decision as to fire, as to fly, as to navigate where to, as to do whichever maneuvers. You don't watch something like Star Trek and Kirk says to um, Sulu, hey, uh, make your best decision. Um, I'm going to leave this in your hands when they're under attack by the Klingons. Uh, Kirk says, do this, fire that, put shields up here, or whatever it may be. And the team around him do the job. Now, that's going to be very much the same when it comes to space combat in Traveller. There is no 
democracy there. Uh, or if there is, you can just imagine how chaotic it would be. Fire the guns. Uh, no, Captain, I'm not going to. I've made a conscious decision that that's not going to be the case. Uh, fly over here. No, Captain, I've decided it's much better to fly in the opposite direction. And so on. Now, that's role-playing, because if that happened, it would be an interesting situation to role-play out. But, you see, it's not space combat. So that question is something that really does need to be addressed before any space combat uh, actually comes forward in the game in any way or shape or form. So what I'm really trying to say is that in Traveller, I don't really do space combat. Now, I know that other people do, but I don't. But if you do want to do space combat, consider this. The Rules for Space Combat in Traveller, Book 2, for a start, actually sets out the equipment that you need. And you really know that you're into a wargaming situation uh, when it starts talking about playing surfaces of uh, 4 meters and so on and so forth. Um, you need miniatures. You need um, ways to measure between uh, different uh, areas. You need to understand vector movement, where movement is based upon the thrust of your ship uh, in the direction it's going and the effect of other uh, vectors upon it, uh, such as gravity or thrusters going in a different direction. Uh, although in book two this is not mathematical, um, it's still something that you would still need to get your head around. Uh, it's even enhanced greater when you look at book five, which deals with almost fleets of ships. I don't see how that really has anything to do with role-playing particularly, uh, but it is there. There are other supplements in the Traveller, in the classic Traveller universe that you could work with. Uh, Mayday is um, something that you might want to look at, uh, which talks a little bit about space combat in that, which is slightly different. That's a box set. Azanti High Lightning has a little bit of information in there as well. And there's plenty of other source material too. Ultimately, however... I do things in a slightly different way. The way that I do things is that I don't do space combat. Um, what I do is I put the player's skills into a, a situation where people can make decisions with their skills, make roles for their skills, but ultimately they are going along a path of uh, fight or flight. Um, they could be in a combat, and it's a descriptive thing. There's another ship out there, drawing pencil drawings of where that is and where that's going. If you get into the entire combat system in the actual Traveller rules, you are turning this into a war game, and th that's a great thing, and I applaud people that want to do that. Um, my game of Traveller is done over Roll20, and it would be a monumental... Um, undertaking to try and actually do that whilst online now i know in roll 20 that there's grids and uh, hex maps and those sorts of things so theoretically it could be done but it's an awful lot of hard work for something that ultimately could just essentially ruin your game um so i don't recommend it personally but i don't say don't do it never say never um but um in my experience, I would take the skills that people have got as part of a crew and gauge them and use them in a role-playing situation. Uh, what's happening on the ship? Where's it going to go? You've been hit. There's a problem here. This is happening. Uh, and you don't see it from a million miles away looking down on a map. Um, in the future, who knows, maybe we'll have electronic uh, means of doing this that people can witness it um, through virtual reality or augmented reality in real time and there's no real overhead in time of setup uh, and consequences. But uh, that day's not here yet. Anyway, so that's my take on space combat. If I get a chance in the future to talk about it in more depth, I'll make a couple more videos that uh, cover the actual mechanics of it. But ultimately... In my experience, role-playing should take precedence over the wargaming aspect. Okay, food for thought, hopefully. Anyway, I'm going to talk uh, more about some of the ways that ships are actually incorporated into the game, uh, especially around trading, and that's coming up in later videos. So until then, thanks for listening, and I'll speak to you soon.